All right, so it's Wednesday. Uh, yesterday, the market was very, very red. Uh, I think I was down like about 10% on uh, my trading portfolio. So it's pretty bad. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> let's go with some news today. Uh, so first news, let's talk about uh, the workers, um, the employment rate actually going down. So over here, there is a, an article by the Wall Street Journal. Uh, talking about the workers quitting their job at a record level in November where we are getting our employment data in uh, on Friday. So the thing about getting our employment um, data on Friday and why this might be a bearish indicator, I feel that we kind of have to play it on both sides because the things, of course, uh, on a on the case by case where because a lot of um, people are actually quitting their job, it might not be good uh, from the grand scheme of things. But if you're looking at uh, from it from the other point of view where we are hoping that taper actually slow down a little bit. Um, this actually works out to be because for tapering, like I said before, uh, we have our two conditions and one of the conditions is the max employment. And because we are further away from max employment because of this uh, uh, data, uh, there is a good possibility that we might be able to get um, a slower taper, uh, which also means that if this, this actually affects the FOMC meeting in any way, shape or form uh, for the January um, FOMC meeting, uh, then we might actually be seeing the rate hikes increase in June instead of May. Uh, not really that big of a difference uh, for us normal people, but I think that uh, you know if we do get the rate hikes coming in a little bit slower, I think it will be good for the economy in some cases, simply because we get cheap money for a longer period of time. I also talked about this um, a little bit um, in a video where is um, the market is crashing. I uploaded this, uh, I think, about 3 a.m. Uh, last night. Uh, it should be at the corner of the screen somewhere. Just, just click on the video. Uh, you can actually basically see what I'm talking about for the employment and also why the market is actually crashing yesterday. Uh, but yeah, uh, over here, basically, they're just uh, saying why the employment is going down and how all the low wages um, companies are actually basically putting in more effort for them to actually hire more people. And of course, to no avail because people are basically are going through the whole great resignation, which I probably will be uploading the video for the great resignation on Saturday. Uh, so yeah. Second news, uh, let's talk about the, okay, yesterday I talked about the Chuck Schumer issue where he wanted to get rid of the filibuster change. Uh, yesterday, uh, right after that, uh, Joe Manchin actually came out to, uh, to be like, you know, uh, if you guys want to change the filibuster rule, you know, uh, you can, but it's best for you to actually get behind the Republicans as well. So over here, you can see that, okay, anyway, you can do a rule change to where everyone's involved. And basically, that's the rule that usually will stay. And that's what you should be pursuing. Uh, basically telling them that, you know, uh, if you want to do this, you should not just let the Democrats have the, the only say. You should actually have uh, the Republicans actually come in to have um, a weigh in on things as well. So if the Republicans think that this filibuster should have a change as well, then you should then you should probably change it. But the thing is that high chance is that uh, the Republicans will not want to change this filibuster rule because it's basically their only shot against the Democrats, especially for this, uh, this electoral season. Uh, so yeah, I think that this is very, very hard for them to really get this filibuster through, especially for the entire um, government body. Uh, right now, we're actually looking at only two uh, basic, um, uh, the two basic people that we have to uh, look at, which would be um, the Joe Manchin and also um, Kristen Sinema. So these two basically have the most amount of votes. Well, okay. They have the biggest weigh in on their votes because they are so special with their um with their action, uh, especially in the government body. Uh so because of that, uh basically you normally hear these two names the most, especially for the senators, especially during all this filibuster, this government um shutdown, uh budget deficit and such. Usually you hear these two names the most. Um so yeah. Uh, basically, Joe Manchin is more towards on the Republican side, even though he is a Democrat. Uh, so I think that this is basically just the normal political struggle. Uh, Manchin is not going to be behind changing um, changing the filibuster. So I think that there's probably going to be nothing much that's going to be changing. So we'll see how it goes. All right. And the last news, uh, I actually went on Bloomberg and I saw something quite interesting. Uh, so over here, you can see, you know, for the hyperdrive uh, section. Lucid to remotely install missing features for debut um, luxury car. 
So basically, what they are trying to do is what Tesla has been doing. Tesla's car, um, whenever there's a new update, there is a new um, bug that they need to fix, there's a, a new feature that they want to install. Everything would be installed remotely through their cloud features. Uh, and I think that Lucy is basically uh, taking on... Um, adapting that, that same format of how they actually do the remote installation for all the features. And I'm pretty sure that for the future updates, that's what Lucid is going to be doing as well, which is why I think Lucid is also one of the... Um, it's one of the EV companies that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, but same thing, because I don't think we're getting Lucid in Singapore. So I don't think there's much that we can really do for that. All right. Uh, and also for the Ford. Ford is such a good company, but I'm so unhappy over the fact that because I sold Ford at like $18, and Ford just had a crazy day yesterday. Uh, let me see. Ford. Ford went up 11% yesterday, all the way to $24. And if you do not understand how crazy this is, right? Ford was about $10 just last year. So basically, they had a 130% uh, they. 140% uh, increase in like the whole one year period. So it's actually quite crazy to see how Ford actually uh, went up all the way. So yeah, you know, surging up to their 20 year high. Uh, okay, but of course, because after Tesla have their, their great deliveries, uh, Ford basically uh, says that, okay, you know, we plan to double our um, double our production for the F-150, uh, which is their pickup. Uh, pickups. So basically, they are saying that they are, they intend to um, double their production. I'm pretty sure this should be written here somewhere. I have not really read this, but yeah. So uh, double doubling their production of the plug-in pickup that uh, received 200,000 non-binding reservation. Yeah. So uh, basically, they are going to be doubling uh, doubling up their uh, production, which eh, you know, uh, sounds like they just want to kind of create hype, but because that, that might sound like just me being sad about getting out of Ford. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm still more bullish on Tesla, even though I don't know Tesla. That's kind of crazy. Uh, but okay, and then after that, the last one, which would be GM losing out uh, on the US sales uh, to Toyota. Um, basically, this whole fight has been happening since 19, um, since the 1900s, actually. And finally, Toyota won. <laughs> uh, but I think for this... Um, I would like to say that this is mostly due to the supply chain issues. But at the same time, I think that Toyota probably go through the same issues as well. So um, I feel that this is kind of tough for us to really say that it's just supply chain issues. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm happy for Toyota. Uh, I, I think that Toyota is a better company than GM anyway. So yeah, basically, this is all the news that we have uh, for today. And also... I also uploaded my predictions for 2022. So if you guys want to see my predictions for 2022, be it the stocks or the crypto in the market, just go over here. It should be here somewhere. Um, I have the video for the predictions of 2022. Or you can just head over to my channel to check more. And also, please do not forget to follow me on Instagram. Um, I post there almost daily. Anyway, I thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.